Hello YouTubers, this is another session in the OData Neo series. In the last session, Joe and I were working on uh, writing in the validations for uh, the projection service. I will start kicking off the process here to get the validations going, you know, for service exceptions, uh, you know, other validations that we need to do there. And then we'll start moving on horizontally into the um, next, next stage, which is the node service. Uh, where we actually build the tree and start processing our data. So let me share my screen here real quick. Here we go. <clears throat> Let's see, trying to fill the screen. There you go. Okay, so where were we last time? We had a validation exception situation here. <clears throat> Let's see. This is your projection service. We basically said validate projected tokens. So this is an array of tokens. Now, you know the real question here is out of these tokens you know every service only validates what it needs so you don't have to validate everything you just want to validate what you need for that particular service and um, in this in this particular aspect here we basically want to go and say you know we are utilizing the raw value out of every projected token so i want to write a test that basically validates uh whether whether a certain projected token, like we want to make sure all these projected tokens are not null. And if one of them is null, then the entire request is corrupted because we can't continue to process that if the actual object itself is null. Can we actually have an array of projected tokens that one of them is null? I don't know. Let's find out. So if I do, you know, let's just do a class and say this is my projected token. This is a REPL. You know, it'll help you kind of, I, I, I noticed that a lot of people are not familiar with this one. So, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, the way how you get to that ripple is just you go to the view and then you go to other windows and then all go the way down to C Sharp Interactive. And that's basically how, you know, you're going to get to that ripple. Ripple uh, helps you kind of, you know, run a concept in C Sharp, you know, and see how far you can take it before, you know, things get, uh, you know, be, before you, you start actually developing it. It's a quick way to kind of validate certain certain concepts like see right now i'm basically wondering I'm like can you actually have a null value in an array of certain classes you should be because a null is still a value of a particular class but i just want to verify that for myself so here's my projected token array tokens new bit to tokens array and then can i put null null in there this is the scenario that I'm trying to validate. If this comes in as null, that means whatever is using this service is sending you invalid data because we won't be able to process that data moving onwards. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, it works. So if I go and say P tokens, yeah, it'll say, yep, I can, I can allow something like that to happen. So let's write a test for that. We want to go and say, you know, this is a, a null projected token exception. Uh, let's see. We want... We want to go into the validations area. This projected, to projected tokens validation exception. And I'm going to write a test here. So remember how we said null projected tokens is null. It's, it's giving me this weird error because the project itself is, let's edit the project, disable nullable. OK, let's go back to this. Yeah, now this error is going to go away. I think it's dumb. I don't think we need that in here. Um, OK, let's write a test for that. So it's fact. Public void should throw validation exception if any uh, projected token uh, token is uh, null. That should be very straightforward. We can go here and say <clears throat> the same thing, really. You know, we can go and say, here is my, here is given, when, then like this and the test here is very interesting because i want to be able to basically go and say throw a null value in the middle of a good array so i need a good array and in the middle of that array i want to kind of throw a good value and a bad value in there just to test this so this is here let's let's do this this projected token random projected tokens so create we don't have that today. Okay, let's 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 create the array for that one. So let's go back to my test here real quick. And let's go to private static filler 
projected token create projected token seller there you go but the tokens don't have any unknown types which basically means my filler is going to be very very simple and very straightforward so new filler uh projected token like this okay <laughs> some people someone asked me that question earlier someone said you know why don't you use the uh, new target type so just do this something like that and the reason why there is a problem with that is that i have no idea new what i have to go back all the way to actually find out what the type that i'm working with is it also gets worse if your type has input parameters like if you go and say let's say my you know i have a public class student and let's say this is a public student that takes in name and i don't know a string great you know uh, details or whatever right so that's your constructor here if you're using this target type new target type values you know, now you have a situation where you have student, student like this, and then you're going and saying new, right? And then this new, you're supposed to <laughs> see if the thing is, so in the new here, I'm saying Hassan and more details, something like that, details, something like that. Now we have a problem, right? Because I have no idea new what, right? Like, I, I don't know. I have to go all the way back here to see what what the student value is which is which is complete nonsense right it's not going to work so um let's i'm going to lean i'm going to lean more towards you know making it you know a, a, i'm going to recommend against that i'm going to recommend against using that kind of value all right okay so that's the case create projected token filler now i want a private static class that says get uh, create random projected tokens like this and this guy is supposed to return a a bunch of projected tokens that are randomly generated right and in the middle of that i'm going to shuffle it i'm going to throw an all value in the middle of that so let's just go here and say create projected tokens filler like this dot create right and here's the count and then i i need to get a random number here's my number and now we have an array to our array as let's see to our array i think but i don't have the the uh directives there you go to our array how long is this guy this guy is 88 so we should be good here okay let's take that let's take that uh that method in here and let's put it somewhere higher because we want to Full MO, yeah. So this guy creates a bunch of projected tokens, expected versus. Um, uh, no, I just want a simple array. So I'm going to put that in here like that. Just a simple array, random array. Okay. <clears throat> now let's go back here and say create random projected tokens. Okay, so that's my guy right here. <laughs> okay, now uh, this is going to be. Uh, my input projected tokens i want to add something to this guy it would be nice if i could just add something on the fly also it would be nice if i could shuffle things right so anyway i can so even if it's a list can i just shuffle it let's see let's see what's available out there shuffle skip let's see if let's see if there's anything outside of the box that can help us with that because if you place the null um if you place the null value at the beginning or at the end of the array it's not random anymore like your test is easily um uh, breakable right we don't want to do that so let's just go here and say shuffle list c sharp is there any is it randomized okay shuffle so we have to have a special function for it nobody did something like outside of the box fisher yates shuffle Ah, shuffle a list in C sharp. Oh, look at this guy. Order item by, uh, but he's using. Ooh, what is that? 
That is a very, very interesting. Wow, that is a solution. I okay, let's let's okay, let's go back. So what this guy is doing, it's basically saying throw a random ra randomizer in there. Let's let's try it. So let's say I have a list of strings, strings equal new list of strings, and then you have Hassan, you have Joe, you have Michael, you have Vishwa. Okay. If I print out strings as is, it'll just print it as is. What this guy is saying is that saying strings dot order by, and then new random dot next, right? You can just do that. Okay, so let's say item. What? Oh my lord! I did not know you could do that. And then if you, if you print it out. No, it's not ordered though. See, it didn't do anything. Did it only work with that example because? Is it because he he had a list of 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 integers? Let's see, integer, inti integers, new list of ints, one, two, three, four, five. And then integers dot order by item, new random, next. No, I'm missing something. Let's go back to this guy. I'm certainly missing something. Uh, let's go back here. Here is our web page. Just zoom in on this guy. Everyone just can see. So, okay, he did one, two, three, four, and then random dot next. Order by item random dot next, and somehow it just did it for him. That's weird. Could it be because? Let's see. Let's go back here. Could it be because he, so one, two, three, four, five, new random. Is it because, let's see. So if I say random, okay, var random miser, new random like this. And then if I go back and say, give me these integer order by like this, but in here I'm gonna go and say item dot randomizer dot next. Don't know if that matters. Oh, it does matter. But why did it flip it upside down like that? It's always upside down now. But if we call it in a function and the value is not, I think I know why. Okay, let's call a, let's create a function. So public um, uh, return void um, uh, let's see uh, int array randomize list right and the only thing that we're passing in here is an integers so a list of integers so here is my list of integers and every time we try to randomize, we will reinstantiate. But that's exactly the same thing like I was doing. That that would be okay, fine, let's try it. So here's my randomizer. And then here is my that would be see I even I didn't even okay, it it's it's very weird how this thing works because I didn't actually uh, return anything. Let's see, return next list dot to list, I guess. We have to do it this way. Okay, so now I need to use that randomizer in here. I don't not that it matters, but well, here's my list. And now if I say randomize list and pass in integers in here. There it is. It's randomized. Now let's try this again. 
I want to try this with, with a list of names, like other things, other than integers. See, yeah, this is, wow, this is insane. This is, by far, this is the most, the simplest way I could think of to randomize a list in any way, shape, or form. I think that's fantastic. Now, would it actually work with with none integers let's find out so string is a string string strings uh strings randomized that to list yeah there you go and then can i actually go and say so where's my strings my strings original value is hassan joe michael vishwa now if i say randomize list of strings and they say strings like that it's randomizing. Oh my lord, this is amazing. This is exactly what I'm looking for. See, a different list every time. Why does it work like that though? That's the <laughs> when it says like order by. Is it oh, is it randomizing the index? Super mystery. Let's look at how the order by function actually works. So let's go back into, here's our Chrome tab. Let's go to source.net. Let's, let's see how this thing actually works. Order by method. So it has a sort function. And this is the column name. I think, I think it's this one, this one here. This order by and it's and it basically pass it to ordered innumerable, and the constructor itself will go and say, "Let me do a little bit of." I wish people stopped doing this underscore in the you know private class members. That that really sucks. Um, so okay, so it's using the selector, and it's randomizing that, and that selector is an int. It's a key of whatever the type may be. Okay. You know, I guess that that could work. Yeah, every time I look at that source code, it makes me sad. But uh, anyway, let's go back to uh, Visual Studio here real quick. And OK, so we have a method, right? We can go and say what I want to do is that I want to add a null value into the list and then I want to shuffle it. So every time I'm running my test, that null value is in a different location and then verify that we actually did that check, you know, and actually you know, our test is actually doing the right thing. So let's let's do that. Let's go into um, let's go into the root of this. And since this is the only purpose of this project uh, of this um, uh, 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 of this um, added projected token, um, since this is the only purpose of this particular effort. And I'm going to randomize intentionally this way. So let's just go here. And now we need it scoped because we can't just have it like that. Um, and this is a list. Here's dot two lists like this. So that's my list of projected tokens. That's the original list. And then I'm going to add to that list. There's list, projected token, random projected tokens. There you go. And now. Out of that list, I want to go and say, I basically want to go here and say, I want to be able to um, add this added projected token to it. So this random projected tokens that add, and this is added projected token. So now we have that null value added in there, right? Now the last thing I want to do is to randomize it, right? Randomize that list. So let's put that in its own kind of, why is this just static? Is this private? Okay. Let's let's create a method here that does that exactly that for us. So let's go into private static list of projected token randomize shuffle. Let's just call it shuffle. Shuffle projected tokens. Here's your list of projected tokens. Input 
I have projected tokens. And basically, we want to a var randomizer new random no okay so this is the random and uh random is inaccessible due to protection level what did i use in here i did use random though right yeah new random which random is this which one is it the one that's coming from the system Go to implementation. What? Let's see, system dot random. It's this guy. Something is conflicting with it. Something is there's another random going on there that's conflicting. Okay. How do you do it when you have two different types from, from two different namespaces? This is what I would do. I would go and say randomizer like this, and I would say system dot random. So I basically used aliasing in here. And this aliasing will basically help me kind of, you know, evolve that process. You know, it, it'll basically help me avoid ambiguity between two, two objects. Okay, great. Uh, let's see here. Um, so I have the randomizer. Now I want to go and say uh, return projected tokens dot order by token dot randomizer dot next dot to list right like that this is gonna order these tokens by a a order the tokens by a randomizer and then return a list this is amazing I love that okay so return shuffle projected tokens and here's my random projected tokens Right, this guy's returning a list. Oh, you want it to be an array. Okay, to array. <laughs> to array because that's what we allow to enter in the system. Okay. All right, let's go back here. Let's go into validations. And then uh, here's a predicted token. token so this is invalid or just let's just say null projected token token here is null okay now that projected token is passed into that function and this function is gonna randomize that okay now let's say projected token uh, input invalid projected tokens Right, and that's that random projected tokens in here, like this. Okay, <clears throat> so if that's the case, then we expect an exception to come out of that. So this is null projected token exception equal new null projected token exception. Uh, also expected projected token validation exception new projected token validation exception with null projected token exception. Okay, now we just need to run this guy. It's exactly the same thing in here. The only difference is that this time it's not the array that's invalid. It's that one, so this is invalid, expected invalid projected tokens. Now the, the input itself is okay, but it has problems. In it internally and these problems are causing you know the system to not be able to uh, process them because the value is non-processable so okay uh, predicted token validation exception should be of type uh, speaking of which this area here is going to get simplified really really fast uh, this dear friend of mine uh, uh, Christopher Dutui you know he's he's a great guy he's from South Africa he's an amazing guy uh, he he is actually basically working on a an upgrade to exceptions and what this upgrade is going to do so here exception what this upgrade is going to do is that it's going to simplify how we use I, I just have a couple of comments there but what he's going to be doing is that he's going to be offering this capability where you can just go and say let's look at the tests 
uh where is it christopher exception extensions you'll be able to just go and say same exception as on the fly and it'll just do that for you right so in terms of let me let me view the proper file um so in terms of validation we can just go and say expected exception same exception as actual exception and it will skip all these additional things like stack trace and all the little things that come with an, a particular exception because you can't generate that unless the exception actually generated from the source so you can't actually build that when you're test driving you know exceptions this way so the best way for us to do this is that for him he basically went and said okay what are the things that we care about well you know we care about the names the full names the messages the full names of the inner exceptions the messages on the inner exceptions and then the data and then at the end here he did exception get type other ex i think that's redundant so let me just leave a comment here chris i think this one is already done from the top yeah so once this pr gets merged in you know once it passes the review and all that we'll be able to actually have much much better and fluent language when it comes to validating exceptions i think that's going to be great okay let's go back to odata neo in here and let's so instead of all of this i could just go and say you know the the exception the expected exception should be the same as actual exception so it'll be much better than than all of this party that's going on here okay so this guy should fail right because it has one bad token in it but in reality it is going to fail but it's going to fail for the wrong reason it's going to fail for null reference exception like we're trying to access you know a property on a reference that doesn't exist check this out so it says the expected is projected token validation exception but i got object reference is not set to an instance of an object when you when you get that you know error that basically means that you've done you haven't done your due diligence in, in terms of validations you're not really validating anytime you see object is not set to an you know object reference what is it um it says um yeah object reference not set to an instance of an object right as soon as you get that message that's an indication that you're not doing due diligence or validation you're waiting for the framework to tell you that you did something wrong good luck with that if you're working with a language like javascript or something like that they won't tell you nothing they'll probably say something like oh not a number not a number or something like that <laughs> anyway okay so so this is failing for the wrong so it's it's failing for the right reasons but it's throwing the wrong exception okay so let's fix that problem so here's a failing test that's a fail and then let's go into the implementation let's go here let's go into projected project tokens implementation let's go to validate tokens <clears throat> okay now how are we going to do this we need a new rule right since we're starting to add rules in here and they're all circuit breakers you know let's extract a method in here and let's say validate uh, projected tokens is not null that's one and then in here private static void validate projected tokens uh, contains no null not null elements contains not null tokens right so it's the same input same guy it's coming in here the statement here is a little bit different we're basically going and saying how long is this guy 107 okay i guess it's okay um we basically want to say if right projected tokens contains or any you're gonna need to make it a list okay not list or wait 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 contains i think we're just missing a reference yeah there you go contains null if it contains null in any way shape or form then immediately raise the alarm and say this is a null projected token exception just like that right so here validate doesn't contain says so your projected tokens done and done perfect and beautiful 
no problem there. This is a little bit larger to me. I don't know, for some reason it's irritating. So I wanna keep it this way. Okay, that should work. That should do the trick. Let's run our tests one more time. Here's my test. Here we go. And it passed. So that basically means we actually really truly, you know, randomized that list. To be 100% sure, even though we did a proof of concept of this real quick, let's just double check it together. Let's go here and say, is it actually throwing the random null in different places every time we generate? Let's just find out. Since the randomization is happening like across the board, as long as the null is not coming always at the end, always in the middle, always in the last, I think we'll be just fine. So let's see, the first time it ran, the null value here, let's hover over this guy. we we'll just do a quick watch since, uh, since StreamYard is failing us. So this is good and this is null. Okay, so in here, the first run, it came in here. Okay, perfect. Let's go back in time. Let's pull a Doctor Strange here. Let's go back in time. And then let's jump again. So let's see here. Now this time, what do we have? We have a the null coming at the very end this time. Okay, let's let's reevaluate. Let's go back here again. And let's run it again. Quick watch. The null is sitting at the top. See? So it's going everywhere it's going in the middle sometimes in the back sometimes in the front you know let's do it one more time just to you know put my heart at ease to, to make sure that we're actually building proper software yep it's going in the middle this time this is truly random and you know that's the thing you know while you think you know things you know the more and more projects you work on you keep you're gonna keep running into things that are really really valuable valuable experiences because apparently there's nothing outside of the box for shuffling lists, which is sad. But uh, I think JavaScript has that outside of the box automatically. But anyway, that's the case. Okay, so the test passed. That's great. So let's go back into the test. The throw validation exception of any projected tokens. Blah, and then we want to go and say this is a fail. All right, this is a pass. Just like that. Okay, what's the next test that I care about? Well, these projected tokens in here, when we start processing, we look at the raw value, right? As long as this raw value is not null, it should be okay. Now, is this a circuit breaking operation? It could be, you know, if, if one of the tokens that are coming through is in a bad state, then we're going to mark the entire request as bad, right? But instead of saying raw value null projected token, we're going to need a new uh, a new uh, reference. We're going to go and say, you know, this time the raw value is going to have to be a, a, a value that's invalid, and that value is going to be randomly selected in that list, which we have the function for, but the exception is going to be different. We're going to go into the models here under exceptions and we're going to create a new type for this guy i'm going to call it invalid raw value exception someone might say why don't you just say in, in invalid projected token exception right and that would be a a good idea but uh the problem with that is you know with circuit breaking exceptions you're not going to collect any more data. You're just going to go and say, here's the problem, and here's why I'm halting this process. I should probably say invalid projected token raw value exception. That makes more sense. Okay, so I'm going to pass this in here. Control KE is a public class. Inheriting from exception. That's, that's the library that I was just showing you the source code for that Chris the two is upgrading. And that's it. We're just going to go here and say, here's a message, base, message. Uh, you know, uh, uh, invalid, projected, token, raw value, 
error occurred. Please fix the error and try again. <laughs> How long is that? 180. Good. This is good enough. Okay, invalid predictor token raw exceptions. Perfect. Okay, control KE. So that's a new error. How are we going to fix that? Let's go back to the test. In here, the test is going to be exactly very similar to this one with very different subtle, like, should, should throw validation exception if any projected token raw values is null. All right, so I'm basically going and saying if the raw value that's coming from here is null, then let's go ahead and, you know, throw the exception. So instead of me saying null in here, I'm just going to go and say, no, this is a proper projected token, but the raw value here is null. So everything here, this is just an invalid projected token in here. And the shuffling is going to happen. The only difference here, instead of null projected token, I'm going to go and say invalid projected token raw value exception. Like that. So invalid projected token raw value exception. And let's see here. Um, so it's invalid projected, and this is what I expect to come on this side. And then everything else should be the same. Let's run this guy. This guy should, it should fail. Is it going to throw an exception? No, because the raw value is there. It's just null. So it's just going to say no exception, I think. Oh, it did. Null reference exception. Aha. Uh -huh. Because it tried to access that guy and it couldn't find it. Okay, perfect. Sounds good to me. Let's go here. And that's the only invalid. Like normally with strings, we say null, uh, null, uh, 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 null or empty space. You know. Uh, now it's it's empty space and empty empty space and no string value is okay. We will call it okay, right? But uh, null is not. Null is not going to be acceptable, right? So here is a fail in here. <clears throat> and let's go into the projected token validations under validation exceptions. And then we're going to go here, private static void validate projected token raw values is not null. Okay, so uh, 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 projected token is projected tokens. And then if projected tokens dot any, right? And here's my token, token dot raw value is null so if any any token has a, a a raw value that is not null so see how simple this is i can now go here and say invalid uh, projected token raw value exception and now i need to handle that because we don't have that handled in our exception layer we only have the null right we're going to go here and say well this is invalid projected projected tokens raw value exception there you go and here you go control ke here is exception perfect let's go and run that test so this is the failing test here let's run that guy should pass should no let's see Still failing. Why is it failing? It's saying object reference, still complaining. It's saying when raw value starts with. So wait. So in here, we might be generating a value. So raw value starts with, okay, this raw value is null. And that should have been taken care. Oh, I never called the <laughs> I never called the function. The unit test is gonna save your butt big time. You know, because 
you don't have unit tests, you, someone would just move on, be like, oh, I already validated it, right? But unit test is like the sanity check that will make sure that you're actually doing the right thing. Okay, so this is uh, raw value is not null. Tokens contain no, no. Okay, so in that order, this is not null, this is not null. And then in here, we basically went and said projected tokens. And this function is basically going and saying if anything in these projected tokens that the raw value is null, then throw that exception. Okay. Do we actually have that scenario? Let's go here and let's run this real quick. Let's see what the problem is. Oh, I even know what the problem is. I forgot to update this guy to match this guy here. Okay, now we should be good. Let's run this guy. Boom, done. Here's your validation, done. So this is a pass. Okay. What other validations do we need to do? I don't think there's anything else. I think that's pretty much it. The one thing that I'm not sure about is whether we need to validate an empty string or not. I don't think empty strings value for anything, right? Um, we could we could literally just say if it's null or an empty string, and then just randomize that. Like basically go and say, hey, try it with this token, try it with this token, and if any of these happen, uh, we should handle it. Should we do that? I think we should. Fine. Let's go back here and let's do a theory data. Public static. We could also actually let's. We, there's also an easier way since this is not a super calculated value. We can literally just turn this into a theory and just say member data or inline data, inline data, and this is null, and this is an empty string, right? And we need a string raw date invalid raw data like that so this invalid raw data that test is going to run twice once with null and once with an empty string and it will say both of them are invalid let's 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 try that out so let's try and run this test here here you go and one is passing and one is failing rightfully so because we changed our rules right now we can go back here into our validations Here's my validations. And I'm going to go back here and say, OK, there's a new thing. There's a new test, right? So I'm going to take that into an expression. I'm going to go here and extract not ex extract method. I want to extract a, a func out of this, right? And this func will say here, just called it predicate because it's a horrible name. But we're going to go say is null or empty okay so this guy is basically saying if the token is null or token dot raw value or uh, or uh, uh, empty string this it's beautiful right you can just go and do something like that you could just go and say raw value is null or empty can i say string dot empty though please that would make me really happy it won't let me it has to be a constant so stupid <laughs> you know it's still i mean <laughs> let's let's make the name a little bit better is raw value yeah so look projected tokens any is raw value null or empty or has raw value has raw value null or empty since this is a funk it has to be an uppercase i think has raw value null or empty? Has raw value null or empty? So if projected token, if any projected token has a raw value that's null or empty, I think that's all right. I think it looks all right. So let's go back here. Here's my method, and here is my passing value you just need to have that determination to make sure that you're taking care of everything you know a lot of people are like ah you know let's just move on right 
that's 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 your passion. That's the difference between an engineer and an employee, right? You want to make sure that you're, you know, talking about the covering all the all the cases, right? Okay, what's another case that we need to take care of here? The only thing is just the unexpected exceptions, the things that just like we did. This is what what we did internal mock for, right? You know, an exception that happened in this method that we don't know what to do with, right? So we need a new file in here. In addition to validations, we need a exceptions. That's like that. There's exceptions. Let's go into a good scenario. Let, let me see if I remember how to use my own library. Here we go. Uh, let's see here. So should throw service exception on project if service error occurs just like that this will be the last the last thing given when then here's the exception that we want to throw var service exception is new exception like this and then var failed uh, projected token Service exception, new failed uh, projected token service exception. So that's the inner exception. That guy will take in the service exception as an input parameter or inner. inner. And then this is my expected uh, token, projected token service exception. That's a category of work that we're working with. So this is new projected token service exception we don't have any dependencies so we're not going to add any dependencies in here okay failed project token service exception okay now we need the mocking part right the mocking part will be you know this dot service dot mock i think or is it internal mock dot mock right okay yeah i do i still remember right and then the method name will be what is the method name that we're running in this uh service that could actually take care of this. This is a projection service, validate projected tokens. So we basically wanna say, once this method is being called, then throw an exception, throw a service exception. Okay, just like that. And then the rest is pretty much what we did in the other two. We basically wanna go and say, here's my action. When this service happened, here you go. Here's the action. Project tokens. Uh, for invalid projected tokens, we could just say any, any projected token. So let's just go here and say <clears throat> projected tokens, some projected token. When I say some projected token or some anything, that basically means these are just, just inputs we don't really care about, right? When we do that, we're basically saying, I don't really care about what comes from the other side. Right, and apparently, uh, because we don't have that function, let's create that function real quick. So where is my guy? This is create random number. Yeah, just this. So let's do an over an overload of that method. So private static projected tokens array create random projected tokens and We need an array, so this is dot to array. Okay, so get, create random projected tokens. Let's go back to the exceptions. There you go. This is good enough for me because this basically says, I just I just want a a placeholder. It doesn't really matter, you know, what the outcome is going to be, right? And then we want projected token service exception. Uh, projected token service exception, and then we want to say um, failed projected token exception. That's for the inner exception in here. Okay, let's create these two models real quick, then wrap up. Uh, this, is, this is failed projected token service exception. There you go. Public class. Here's exception. Uh, Ctor uh, exception inner etc. 
exception base message uh let's see a failed projected token service error occurred contact support because it's not their fault something internal happened so they need to talk to the support team that will actually help them with something like that okay we will clean that up i also want um projected token projected token service exception Okay, so here's this guy, public async, <laughs> inherits from exception, ctor, constructor, here is my uh, exception, inner exception, here's a message, and this is projected token service error occurred, contact support. Okay, and then I want to pass in my inner exception in there. Okay. Control K E, Control K E, K D K E. Okay. K E K K E K D is your friend here. Okay. Now let's go into final stage. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. And then we need that service this and then this guy should fail right because it's not gonna it's gonna throw the exception but we don't know what to do with it we don't know how to handle it there you go so this guy is saying uh null method for internal mock null reference exception oh i also need to how did i use my own internal mock function the tokenization service that needs to also clear out all calls that's right that part is important. Is there anything else I need to do here? I don't think so. That's all there it is. Uh, okay, let's go into the exceptions. And this is the projection service exception. Uh, this is my projected token. Let's run this again. And oh, I forgot this. This guy has to be. Yeah, that's the thing. This guy has to be a a um it has to be a static so this is yeah this guy needs to be a static method in order for that to work rightfully so because it doesn't need an instance from the class so it's okay now this guy is not going to throw that exception anymore and I, I might add in an implementation later that says if it's null or is if it's static or not so now we're getting this we're getting you know i expected you to throw failed projected token service exception right i didn't get that the actual should have been actually service exception in here but it didn't throw a service exception why it didn't throw a service exception so if i go here and say catch exception exception like this, and I say throw. Does it actually see debug? Oh yeah, it threw the exception. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, let's do that. Let's take that out. What happens if I run this in debug mode? It looks like internal mock might need a revision it's still super beta but yeah it's here you go it's throwing the exception so it throws the exception only in debug mode why it doesn't throw it when i do run that's interesting something about reflection i guess you're gonna have to fix that problem but uh, okay this is the error that i'm expecting this guy here is fail and i need to go handle that exception right can I get it done in six minutes? Let's see. There's exceptions. Catch. Exception. And then var failed projected token service exception equal new failed projected token service exception. So we'll take that inner exception and then throw new projected token service exception with the enter projected oh projected there you go now this guy should pass
Yep. Yep. Okay, what's the error now? Let's see. Failed projected token service exception. Failed projected token. Failed project. Oh, this guy should be a projected token service exception. Okay, let's try this again. Uh -huh. Done. There you go. That should do the trick. There you go. And pass. Perfect. That's the end of it. That's 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 the entire projection service horizontally. That's the scenario we would need for a select for a select case. All right. So this guy also is a pass. All right. So now now we're ready for a PR. Now we can go here and say, okay, now we can actually create a pull request for this because now we covered all the cases that we want to cover for um, O data projection. And now let's go and see if we can open up. I think it's in draft mode. There it is. Yeah, it's in draft mode. Okay, this is all covered. We took care of all of this. Ready for review. Uh, and yep, let's see. Let's see if the if the command line running on the debugger running in debug mode or release mode. Or rather, when you do .NET test. Does it kick off? Because I want to see why internal mock is being weird. Is it because of some sitting in Visual Studio that we don't know about? What's the deal? It needs to run in both cases. I can't just go to engineers and tell them, hey, you know, oh, you know, you know, we have to we have to make sure this works, you know, because of the you have to change 50,000 settings and do a, a rain dance in order for something like that to work. That's not feasible. So let's just wait for this guy to do. Would it be done in a minute? Let's see. Come on. It's not that big of a library. Come on. Here we go. <clears throat> Come on. I might just need to reach to our engineering solutions teams. I know a couple of people there that could help us out with <laughs> expediting the process of kicking off a build. <clears throat> Right. Come on, friend. All right. So did it actually? Oh, okay then. So it is actually running. Yeah, 11 tests passed. Okay, perfect. Yeah, this guy should be ready now. I'll wait just for a day to see if people, you know, can leave any comments about anything. I'll even always give your code a code review, you know, every now and then when you're, you know, basically doing your um, testing. Uh, when you When you commit a code like this, especially in open source projects, you know, and you have the power to merge in your own PRs and you may or may not get a review from the community, just give it a day and come back and review your own pull request. You know, you come back, you come back as a completely different person, you know, and, you know, at least, you know, an, a, a fresh new mindset, you know, and you can actually work through this. So we did the filter. Okay. I don't know why we did the filter. It should be a select or something like that, but, you know, fine. You know, it, Filter is just an example, but it should cover the select. See, I'm already having second thoughts about 
some of the code that's in there. Anyway, that basically wraps it up for us. <clears throat> uh, for people watching, as usual, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know, please drop a comment in the comment section. I'll drop the link for the, excuse me, the pull request in in the description of this video. And uh, you know, the next step would be to turn to turn that array of tokens into a tree or into a, an expression that can be translated into whatever we want. It could come back as a just raw O data if we want it to be like the reverse, you know, shoot it back to being a raw O data query. We can we can turn it into whatever we want. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in another session.